What is up, everybody, and welcome into the DNVR Nuggets podcast right here in the very, Off Day Lounge. Very yeah. tired air horn. <laughs> I have no energy for an air horn for anything. So, hour slept last night? What are we looking at? I, I didn't count too few. <laughs> four? Yeah, that's what and I'm at. About four, four and a half, so it wasn't much. Four? Um, four, solid four. <laughs> four piece for all of us. But you know what? We're going to rally. Like the Nuggets will rally tomorrow, tired as they down. may be. We're not going to back down. Let me introduce the panel real quick. I got the man with the wind behind a hat. It's Harrison Wynn. <laughs> should, should I bring the flow out? Yeah, bring the flow out. It's too early for that. Yeah, too early for that. 1 p.m. I had, I had a rough morning. I, had a rough <laughs> <laughs> I got the man in the flower shirt staying on brand. It's it's bread and vote. I also had a rough morning. I enjoyed reading your piece, though, this morning, Harrison. Good stuff. Good oh, work. Thank you. I have not read it yet. Thank Ooh, you. I, that's lying. why. I knew that's that. why you I did that. I, was like, I loved it, too, man. It was great. I know it's going to be great. I know the subject matter, man. It's like the best story in sports right now, Austin Rivers. And we're joined by a very special guest, guys, from Nuggets.com, also via Brooklyn. Brooklyn Brooklyn. in the house. Alex Labadoo. Thank you. What's up, brother? What's going on, everyone? So people don't know, man, like, the... This is unique, I think, to Denver. You've been in other markets. Mm -hmm. But the Denver media group, I feel like, most at least, there's like a real fraternity to it. You know, like it's, it's, I know I've talked to Jake Fisher, who's been around. He had the biggest thing where he's like, man, it's so weird here in Denver. I'm like, why? He's like, because everybody's nice to each other, (laughs) like the reporting and stuff. And it's true. But because of the pandemic, I haven't seen Alex in 18 months, man. It's been a while. Yeah, man. I missed you, dude. Missed you too, man. Yeah. Well, if you would go to a game, Adam, you would see Alex. Yeah, like, yeah, I, I haven't seen Alex many times. Get off your ass and go do your We job. haven't seen Adam in so long that Eric Sparacos doesn't even wear suits anymore. Is wow. that true? Oh, Has yeah. he still got the sandals? Has Things he still have got changed, the loafers? Yeah, yeah. Things like, have he's, changed. He's totally cash now. Really? Like, Adam, you know, it, every it, once in a while, I'll see Nico look up and be like... Yeah, <laughs> just that you're disappointed. Not here, like, uh, yeah, like. Space. everybody's disappointed. Huh? <laughs> well, guess what? It's not changing. <laughs> the decorum melted away real fast this year. Oh, I wore sweatpants to a game. I'm not even gonna front. Like, sweatpants. When, when, when there were no fans, I wore sweatpants to a game. <laughs> oh my god, you're gonna have like a bathrobe, go full Big Lebowski one. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, white Russian. Yeah, but no, for real, man. Like this is one of the things that this bar has sort of signified over the last couple, couple days is. Like, it has been a reintroduction to nature mm. for a lot of people. Like, I mean, think about it. We very, very rarely saw people to see it packed. It was, does feel like, okay, like, you know, an end to this all in sight and, and, and sort of a cool thing. And, and getting to see you today is, is definitely a part of that. Let's stick with, before we move on, <laughs> usually I say, like, we slept on it. Let's, what's a re-perspective? But I'll start with you just to get your perspective on last night's game. Like, it felt like a special moment. Because Austin Rivers was the guy that carried him home. Like, kind of, what was your thoughts as you were watching that game? Your takeaways from it? It was funny because you know, in the third quarter, I was I was mentioning to a few people like they need a third scorer, and Austin was that guy. Uh, it was great to see um, his story, just in general. To to piggyback off of Harrison's story, is is just so remarkable. Just having you know, he was a free agent for a month and a half, and and he didn't know where he'd play le- next, and just to see him join a contender and to you know, really fit in culture wise has been really impressive to me. He's, he's really stepped up and, and, and done some great things for this team so what, far. What'd you know about him or what did you think you knew about him? Well, the, the thing that surprised me the most is I, I didn't realize he was a decent defender. You right. Know? Like, yeah. like yeah. Agree. strong agree. <laughs> yeah. Point. Like I knew he was a, a, a good slasher and a decent playmaker, but he, he's made a ton of great defensive plays throughout the season. So that was something that really surprised me. And just the fact that he's just fit in. And, and every time you see his media sessions, like he just feels authentic, yeah. mm-hmm. which is, is a rare quality in the NBA. And just to so see the, the authenticity of him and, and just him, him pouring out his soul every time he talks, it's, it's great. It's, it's really fascinating to watch. He's such a fan favorite so quickly. And it's <laughs> cool, man. Like when a guy like that has been bouncing around on the shelf or whatever, like does it, Nine times out of ten, they join a team, and they're the scapegoat. It's like, man, we can't win because we brought in two-way player, and he sucks, and he's ruined it. The fact that he's come in and been the opposite of that, not only played so great, but I think also won over like the fan base. You know, like mm-hmm. the fan base. Bars chant is his name multiple times <laughs> last I, night. They like, were going to build a statue on the spot. <laughs> and, hey, that's not easy for a Duke guy, too. Yeah, that's so <laughs> true. Yeah, that's so true. That's a great point. Have, there's a lot of things working against him, man. Yeah. That's so funny. Um, you know, now you slept on it, Vote. Is there sort of what, is there any change in perspective from last night to tonight or today? I mean, Portland missed a lot of open shots. It, like that... In some ways, that was an outlier shooting performance. But I'll say this. I think Denver is better suited to win 
games that sort of bounce in all these crazy directions. I think Portland kind of has to hit their shots, and sometimes Dame pulls them out of the mud late in games. Um, but to me, it was like, it wasn't just shot luck. It was like, okay, Denver has more ways to win a game. Mm. That's just how it felt to me. Yeah. I just can't get over the fact that the Nuggets are going up against Dame Lillard and CJ McCollum in a playoff series, one of the best backcourts in the league, and the Nuggets are missing their starting backcourt. Right. And they're starting Faku, Camposo, and Austin Rivers with Shaq Harrison and Marcus Howard and Monte Morris off the bench. Like, it's such a mismatch on paper. Yeah. It, it's such an absolute mismatch. And the Nuggets are up 2-1. I actually, they're up 2-1. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> like, I, what? There's another takeaway, man. That, Dame is one of those guys where he's so good offensively that his defense is just never discussed. And it's really bad. He was really bad in yeah. game three. I yeah. mean, guys like Faku torching him in the pick and roll. Um, that late, like, late in the game, it just looked... We haven't really seen Denver attack him so much. And I just came away from that game thinking, like, that's another card in their back pocket. You know? Mm. Are, there, are there ways to get switches or even go to Faku or Amante and just attack Dame? Because his pick and roll <laughs> defense is... Um, is lacking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You having fun with this team? You know, you've been here. How many years you've been there? Three? This is like two, two and a half two years for me now. So, yeah. I, for me, you know, obviously I came from the Nets previous to this. And uh, the Nets are obviously another great organization. But just to see sort of the, the family culture that this team has, it, it really impressed me. Because I think if you watch this, TV, this team on TV, you don't really get to see it. But when you get to meet guys like Tim, Calvin, mm -hmm. and, and even other guys like, uh, you know, like our coaching staff, um, you get a sense that there's there's one there's that that desire to really prove how good this team could be, and just this this close bond that you don't see with a lot of other teams. Yeah, and it, it's funny because last night we were talking about the culture and how it trickles down, like even in some cases maybe even beyond the team, and like the fan base feels it and almost buys into it. And I think so. You mentioned I don't know how much people see it, but I think people actually do. And it, you're right that it takes time. You don't think you glance at the Nuggets yeah. and get it. But when you are watching them for a full season or especially multiple seasons, you do just get that feeling of like you. We all feel Tim, Tim Conley's love. Like we're all, yeah. we're all we're we're distant cousins. You know, like there's, there's the the patriarch and everything flows down or whatever. And Michael Malone, I should put in there too. Like I, sure. you know, they all deserve the credit. But I I do think that's part of what's cool about this team is fans are starting to feel the the specialness of the group, not just basketball. And the thing is, is too, from my end, every guy who's on this roster, you feel fits. You know, you ever look mm -hmm. at some rosters and you're like, oh, that guy doesn't fit with the rest of the group. Like this guy, like every single team, including Austin Rivers, great culture fit. And, yeah. and I think that that's the reason why he's doing so well right now. And obviously he's, he's had some on and off games, but just from a culture level, guys want to see him do well. And, and yeah. that's something that you rarely see like in a lot of other teams. So I think the successful teams, they do that well, and the yeah. Nuggets are doing that well. I do think Austin like deserves a ton of credit for fitting in. Yes. A big reason why he's been able to fit in, to your point, Alex, is the culture is so strong. Like, like I think it's a two-way street in that regard. Like Denver's culture, it's so real. It, it, it's so real, and it's tough to kind of wrap your head around unless you're a Nuggets fan and a follower. But um, w when you have Tim and Michael Malone and Nikola Jokic at the top setting the culture, it's easy for guys to fall in line. It's yeah. easy for Austin Rivers to come in here and say, Nikola Jokic, the MVP of the league, the best player of the league is this selfless dude. Like, all I want to do is fit in because that's what he's doing. And it's funny because fall in line almost diminishes it. Like last night, he didn't. He stood out. He yeah. was the guy, and that's what's cool about it is it's not. And, and this is why I think we can oversell the culture and be like Austin Rivers because of the culture fit in. But a lot of this Austin Rivers last night talking about the sort of introspection he's had to face over yes. the last six months, and for him, it's not just that he landed in a place that could appreciate that up from him, but also that he was just I think ready. To be, he desperately wanted this a situation like this, and, and he's just growing. It's a higher state of self awareness, like about who he is as a basketball player. Oh. And when listening to him talk, I think that's sort of what he's been articulating. Like he's very good. His career high is forty one. He that's just wild. won a playoff game on the road. Hey, what did he have like, last night? What was the point? Twenty four. He was sixteen in the fourth. Yeah. So this that's is a guy who, too. like, you don't want him to be your star. Oh. Uh, he is a role player, but like, it is a very fine line between playing within oneself and limiting oneself. And as we just saw with Jeremy Grant, like a lot of these guys are just waiting for their chance because they know what the rest of us don't, which is they're good enough. I think it's been a fine line for Austin to walk. And I think one thing that's hitting for him here in Denver is 
just this ultimate state of awareness. He knows he's not the star. He knows it's not about him. But Michael Malone's told him, don't be afraid to shoot. Michael Porter Jr. has told him, don't be afraid to shoot. And from day one since he's got here, he's been empowered to be, look, we know you know you're not Jokic, but you can go win us a game. Right. And yeah. and like it's a, it's a lot more difficult than people think for a role player to be confident enough to do what Austin just did. Um. The Nuggets do have a Ted Lasso ness to them, man. Like you guys, have you watched the show? Have you watched Ted Lasso? I, I've seen the commercials. The, sir, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> He's like an overly positive coach. Just like uh -huh. it's honestly the only show on television right now that's positive. <laughs> Every other show is like so wonderful. dark, the yeah. dark, seedy <laughs> underbelly, or whatever. And he's just yeah, like delightful. But it is funny because it is a you know a sports team, and they do just keep pulling all these like flawed people, and they get the best out of all of them. They all come together. It just feel a good show. But yeah. you watch the Nuggets, and it's like all right, five foot seven point guard. Like yeah, you're all these flaws, but you know what? you're gonna make it work and austin rivers nobody wanted you but you know what by golly come on in here buddy let's give you a big old hug and just, the nuggets are so hokey so true. I, yeah. like oh uh, they, they even have their danny rojas and faku dude he is he is danny <laughs> rojas he's all his life he's all his life. All his life it's so funny um let's play a little game here biggest surprises biggest surprises of the season so far look at this graphic biggest surprise it looks like austin is yelling at faku also looks like faku is like Freaking out! He almost looks like is it Schmeagol no, or Gollum? I think, or is it both? I think that's just Faku's resting expression. <laughs> resting, yeah, <laughs> his resting expression is a hundred percent intensity. Uh, Alex, we'll start with you on all of these. Biggest surprise: Austin Rivers or Facundo Campazzo? I'm gonna have to go with Austin. You know, I, I think that again, he's he was streaky at one point during the season, but to win a game in the fourth quarter like he did yesterday. Um, that really impressed me. Nothing Faku does surprises me anymore. <laughs> like literally, the, he's five foot eight to your point, yeah. and he's jumping out there blocking shots and getting eight rebounds. Like nothing he does surprises me. You could literally tell me tomorrow he's going to outer space, and I'd be like, <laughs> okay, yeah, sure, let's let's see it. Yeah. Uh, so to see Austin just take over the game like he did yesterday was really impressive, and and I can't wait to see how he builds on that. You know, the play of the game that we actually I don't think talked about on last night's show. Maybe we mentioned it, um, but. It was tied 91-91, and Portland had the ball and momentum. Like it was, it was very much one of that moment where it's like if this tilts the other way and you get a lead going, Denver might not be able to salvage it. We're not that many minutes left. And Faku sprints down the court and gets that steal where he gets, gets the steal and then saves it from going out of bounds where he had to like sprint to the corner, slow his momentum enough to save it and throw it back. And that was just a total... We're on the the literal razor's edge. We're like 91, 91, a couple minutes left to go, fall this way or fall that way. And he willed it to falling in Denver's favor. And He's just in the right place at the right time. Yes. Always. He's just always, always there. Always in the right place. He's a yeah. winner. Now. He's a winner. He is a winner, man. We talked about it in game one. You like you just get these little chances, these moments, and you feel them when they yeah. happen. Like This is going to be something we talk about an yeah. hour from now. And I thought Faku was there in virtually all of those moments. Yeah. He stepped up. And, and you've seen that throughout the season. I mean, let's yeah. talk about that Clippers game, for example, in L.A., mm -hmm. where like he was shooting poorly the whole night, and then he hits that three with one minute left. Right. You're just like, that's what you – like. Hits <laughs> them when they count. <laughs> he just does it every single game, and it's, it's, it's a big reason why they're continuing to do well without Jamal Murray. Definitely. Austin Rivers, to me, is, is probably the answer. But the funny thing, though, is if you would have told me this question four months ago, when Faku was at his lowest, like his, Faku kind of hit a, a rock bottom. Like he started out and then just kind of went down. You're like, man, this guy just can't play. There's no way he plays in a playoff series, whatever. If you would have told me at that moment, like who had the bigger one, I'd be like, oh, Austin Rivers because he replaced Faku. <laughs> like, whatever, whatever. The fact that they're actually a tandem now, I know. they're mm -hmm. like the dynamic duo of yeah. backcourts. And it is funny. I see. You know, it's unfortunate, especially with the Clippers down this year. We're going to talk about the Clippers a little bit later on, but the, the them down that maybe it diminishes a little bit what Denver did last year. I don't know, but no, it was no. it was last year when Denver came back. The story wasn't Denver came back; it was the Clippers blew it or whatever. And I I've seen on the timeline last night if the Blazers can't beat the Nuggets, they need to blow it up because clearly Dame and CJ don't work. And like, look, there might be part of that. I'm not. I don't care to analyze what they need to do. But people keep throwing out the like, it's Austin Rivers and Faku Composite. It's like, man, those guys are. Austin Rivers had five three pointers. Like, mm -hmm. Faku made a million plays. Like, it's not yeah. like these guys are scrubs. You just don't know about them yet. And yes, Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum should be above. Like, they should be winning that battle. But you know what? Give some credit to the dudes that are actually making it happen because they, they've, they've made it with heroics more than it's been like right. Portland's choked away, right. you know, the opportunity, in my right. opinion. Um, 
bigger surprise. Blazers you, winning game one. You want our answers? Oh, did you guys not give it? You guys nodded. I just assumed. Go ahead. Biggest surprise, Faku or Rivers? Um, I'll, I'll argue Faku's case on this because if, if you're looking at Austin Rivers, yeah, it's, it's crazy. He came in and hit five threes, but he's experienced. He's been in big playoff games. He's been in the league for a while. He knows what to do. He's not phased by the playoff environment with Faku where he is now from where he was, like you were saying during the regular season at some points, if you were going to tell me this dude's playing 35 plus minutes in a playoff game and the nuggets are winning and he's not a huge minus, I'd be, I would have been like, what? Yeah. Like, there's absolutely no way. But he, he's making winning plays. He's he, he's an absolute positive, I think. And um, it's absolutely translated. Um, I had my doubts. I, I made those known. I, I was wondering, like, is this guy going to be able to play? Are they just going to go after him every single time down the floor when he's on defense? Are they going to exploit him? But no, he's held his own. He's held his own. I'll say Austin just because an entire nation was in my DMs telling me that one guy was going to play well. <laughs> so at a certain point, I chose to believe yeah. them. <laughs> okay, that's a great point. There was no nation for Austin Rivers. Um, Blazers winning game one, Nuggets winning game three. What was more of a surprise? Game three. Mm. Um, I thought, especially with Portland expanding their fans, uh, yeah. that they were going to come in you know, ready to go, fired up, and they just capitulated after the first three or four minutes of the game and I just didn't understand what's going on. Um, you know, I think that's a credit one to some of the coaching that 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 the Nuggets are doing. They really have stopped those role players after game one. You're not seeing Melo go off as much as he, he was before. You're not seeing Simons or any of these other guys really taking off as, as they were in game one. So for me, like you just look at at what they've done and and where's CJ McCollum? Has anyone found him? Like know, he's man. been MIA. he's been MIA and that's uh, he's shooting well, but he's just not taking enough shots. Um, and I think that that's a credit to the scheme that the Nuggets are I agree. Um, so uh, for me, for them in game three, that was a huge, huge win. And now they're kind of playing with house money. Um, yeah. So that's a big win. And if they win uh, on Saturday, whew, who would have who would have called that before the series? <laughs> It'd be the best, man. Like getting, getting a lead in a series, it's so foreign. I don't know what it would look like. I, uh, I think it would feel good. I don't know. Um, I'd what, say I'd say game three also, yeah. to Alex's point. Um, and you saw Portland come out with an edge, I thought. They yeah. came out aggressive. They came out confident. And then Denver punched back, and Portland was like, oh, shit. Like, this isn't going to be as easy as we thought. Yeah. I thought the crowd was going to carry him, but it seemed like it only carried him for the first three minutes of the game. Yeah. Is the temperature vote hotter right now in the series at, from game one or was game three more? Because I think game two was the pinnacle so far yeah. where like it was so chill. I thought there was going to be a fight oh, on the I court. See, I see. But like it, I can't imagine that's going away. I thought it was a little more tame in game three. But I do think if and as this thing gets closer to seven, yeah, th that should all be rehashed again. Like, I don't think Zach Collins is done with inflammatory hand gestures. I'll put it that <laughs> way. <laughs> oh, that was wild, man. He has a real punchable face, doesn't he? He sure does. <laughs> some people, like, and I, you know, some people have said that about me. Like, some people just look like a douchebag or whatever. You know, I think that was there. just me. <laughs> <laughs> I, <didn't laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't want to call you out by name, yeah. but his vote, vote said that about me. But no, but Zach Collins, like a 10 out of 10, just he looks like a... A guy that's just constantly yeah. starting shit, you know? Mm -hmm. Everybody that hasn't played in this series has tried to start something. <laughs> <That's so true. laughs> Jamal, <laughs> Jamal Murray had the league call on him and be yeah. like, hey, uh, <laughs> chill <laughs> out, bro. Talking too much shit. Let's take our first break. We have a, a lot more of these um, either ors that we're going to do on the other side, but we got to get a commercial break in here. Yeah, breaking news just into the show. The Lawnmower 4.0. From oh, Manscaped. wow, just in. It's available. It's available. Do you manscape, bro? <laughs> yeah, we're going to make Alex as uncomfortable Every time we get a guest on, on these reads. Tell us about your manscaping. <laughs> yeah. You can get the Lawnmower 4.0 from Manscaped. Go to manscaped.com. Use code DNVR. You can get 20% off plus free shipping worldwide. Worldwide free shipping uh, with Manscaped. Make sure to use that code DNVR for 20% off. A nice little feature about the Lawnmower 4.0. You don't have to plug it into that charger. It's got wireless charging. I did not wireless know this. Wireless charging on the Lawnmower 4.0. Is, is this a real thing? Yeah. The future's crazy. The new wireless the charging the, system. The, the Lawnmower 5.0 is going to shave you itself. It's like a hands free shave. <laughs> yeah, it's actually just, just a smartphone. Yeah, it's it's going to be really phone. crazy. Yeah. Uh, get 20% off and free shipping with the code DNVR at manscaped.com. Yeah, that's 20% off with the code <laughs> yeah, uh, DNVR plus free shipping at manscaped.com. 
Also at Green Mountain Dental, DNVR listeners, you guys can get a free Sonicare toothbrush when you schedule a cleaning x-ray and exam. Uh, they're great people. A lot of us go to Green Mountain Dental Group here at DNVR. Uh, cavities filled, get any type of cleaning, dental work done. Uh, they're great at what they do. Uh, they're Denver sports fans as well. So check them out today. Get a free Sonicare toothbrush when you schedule a cleaning x-ray and exam. And I'm going to throw a little DraftKings pick of the week in here. Whoa, you why got not? a DraftKings pick of the week? Whoa. Seems like a good time for one. All right, You're you welcome. Yeah, here it is. Game four, Nuggets are four-point underdogs. Sounds about right. Yeah. I'm going with Nuggets plus four. <laughs> going with Nuggets it. plus four. That's your, that's your pick of the week, in Game huh? four for my DraftKings pick of the week. Feeling confident. I feel weirdly confident. I mean, it's not it's not great because you lose it, and then you're like, why was I so excited or optimistic? Because I'm rarely optimistic about the Nuggets, but I really do think I, I just look at it and I think Denver has adjustments now. Some of the shot making is going to, you know, the margins. So Pressure, Simon's goes all off. On pressure's all on Portland. But there's some pressure on them, man, and and Denver just I think has a lot of counters. Um, getting back into our game, biggest surprises: the Mavs are up 2-0, or that Memphis is tied 1-1. Well, I actually called before the playoffs. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> that the Mavs were going to beat the Clippers. Did you think it was going to happen in four? I didn't think it was going to happen in four. <laughs> I, I think I called it for six. I just think the, the Clippers are, are – and listen, uh, I don't – Just say it. Just say it. Just say it. <laughs> just say it. I, I don't cover the team, so I can't tell you, like, what I've seen, like, aside from what I see on TV and read. But they just seem to be lacking leadership. Sure. And they've been lacking that for the past few years. And – and everyone says, you know, Kawhi is a is a two time champion, but he's also played with guys who are leaders. That's a great point. You Not know just what guys, I mean? like, like teams got, that yeah. have a culture that are yeah. rock solid. Like you had Kawhi in Toronto, you had Timmy and 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 Tony in in, in San Antonio. You Don't, mean Kyle in Toronto? Oh, yeah. Lowry, yeah. Yeah, Kyle, uh, yeah, sorry, my bad. Um, but yeah, like you have you have all of these guys who can sort of be the leaders where all he has to do is focus on on being a two-way player and yeah. in the Clippers he's had to be the guy and I think that that's something that I'm not sure he's fully capable of being at this stage well yeah I'd have to say the Clippers being down 0-2 as well um I mean I was never like that true of a believer but I thought the Mavs were worse this year and the Clippers were better than mm. they were last year when the Clippers beat them pretty easily in that series so I'm I'm pretty shocked I'm going to go with Memphis. Memphis took game one off yeah. the one seed. And Utah... Off of, like, 40 hours rest. And, like, I know they were down Donovan Mitchell, but just team play, process, how well coached they are, having a game plan, executing. Maybe Phoenix has there been a better team than Utah all year. So for John Moran and Memphis to go in there and steal game one, I don't think they're going to take this series. But that result alone really blew my mind. Can I give them a chance in this one? Like, sure. I, I'm with you that I think it's probably Utah at this point. I would say Utah in six. So I think that not only they get it, but they probably have a little wiggle room there. But I got to say, I'm impressed with Memphis, man. And that last game, too, was not like a cakewalk. That was also a dogfight. And they ended up winning, you know, pulling away and getting the, uh, a comfortable win. But that was by no means a blowout. And that was game two with the Donovan Mitchell boost. With the home court boost, with all of that stuff, and Memphis still went toe to toe. So, for me, Utah still has, I think, a lot of pressure on them to sort of like get up to snuff. We've mm -hmm. seen this Lakers team that getting guys back every game, they kind of get a little bit better, but it's taken a lot of games. Like I think Donovan Mitchell, I don't know what their schedule looks like when they have games coming up that was separated by just one day off, but I don't suspect he's going to be great every single game in the series. Right. I think it's going to take him at least the entire first round to get back to, yeah. to, to normal. So I, th I think one of the takeaways that I have from the Memphis series is this younger generation of players just not giving a fuck. <laughs> like John Morant doesn't care that he's going up That's against the number great one point, seed. Man. He's so going true. on the road. Trey Young doesn't give a shit about the MSG crowd yeah. going into New York, man. Like I just love this younger generation of players. And they're all young, exciting point guards. Yeah. I mean, John Morant, like... You knew he was good. You didn't realize he was this good. Uh, and and you got to give credit to, again to their coaching staff. They, if you want to talk about a team that has really punched above its weight, mm. it's Memphis this year. But yeah. even maybe not. Maybe their weight class should be up again. And, and part of this because they're the young team that's like in the West. Whenever a yeah. young team yeah. is breaking through, they might actually be the team that they are. It's just they've never proven it. But sure. maybe this is actually who they are because 
yes, they beat Utah. Before that, they beat Golden State. And Golden State, That's everybody had Golden State. And they go in there, and it's like, hey, yeah. man, we're not here for your party. We're not here to be the footnote in your story. And I do love that sort of irreverence that the new generation has. And I wonder, maybe I, I haven't, this is a total, not even half-baked, I'm quarter-baked thought go. here. But if I look at the LeBron generation, even Melo falls into this category, it's a lot of, in my opinion, artificially crafting your own narrative. Right, like they got so good at this idea that I can control how people talk about me and where I go and this or that. And there's like pl- pluses and minuses to all of this. But I wonder if the younger generation comes in here because it's weird how much they all have a reverence for Kobe, but not LeBron. Mm, it seems, yeah. and I wonder if there's a little bit of a like, dude, I didn't grow up, I didn't buy your BS. A real ones know, a real hoopers know type thing, and we're like, we're going to go at this old guard. Because oh, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> one one thing I wonder is also like. The LeBron, Carmelo, Anthony um, era, they all grew up watching Jordan. Right. They all had that, like, oh, I want to be Jordan. Yeah. I want to live up to these guys' expectations. These guys, Ja, they, they've only seen Jordan on, on YouTube. They don't know him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Jordan so, is honestly <laughs> wilt to them. It's yeah, really amazing. Yeah. You saw Zach Levine said, um, he, Jordan's a ghost. That's how I talk about Wilt. Like yeah, my yeah. generation talks about him. Like I don't. Nobody saw him. He didn't. Right, this. right. Zach Levine saying this about Jordan. <laughs> it's like my uncle sometimes would be like, "Have you ever seen Bob McAdoo play?" I'm like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> and you just assume he wasn't as good, and you're like, "This or that yeah, doesn't you know? really count." But you know, yeah, yeah. Jordan yeah. counted though. I'm telling you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is. It is funny. I just wonder if there's a little bit of that from this new generation of like. They, they grew up on the everybody gets to make their own myth generation because everybody has Instagram and all these other ways to tell the best, to view yourself in the best light that there's less, the bullshit is caught. Like, I always say this, I don't know if you guys find this interesting, I find it really interesting, but like Jordan is the only guy that has pulled off telling the world his story and everyone's bought it. Like everyone's just yeah. like, they love the Jordan story and it's like, hey, and part, like there's obviously truth in it. But everybody chasing that after tried to take from the Jordan playbook, it just it came out more hollow. Whether it's fair or not, it just hasn't felt as right. I think part of this is the way the world's evolved. And I wonder if this younger generation just sees through all of it and is like, man, we grew up on Instagram. We grew up on Snapchat. We know none of this shit's real. Like, right. what's real is this court. <laughs> we, we know what a BS post yeah, looks exactly, like. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> RJ Hampton's reading LeBron's Instagram posts. The <laughs> ghost of Kobe <laughs> handing you your ring. Like, get out of here, man. They're like, get all the way the F out of this shit, man. Um... So we can move on to, to talking about this. How good Trey Young has been? Oh man, this is a this is this one. It might be poking the bear for you. I am how so good <laughs> how good Trey Young has been, or how bad Julius Randall has been. <laughs> Sorry, uh, the bigger surprise is obviously Randall. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw agree. Trey come to Denver last year and drop forty seven in one of the best games I've ever seen. That a dude is have. a real one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, what did he have that post? It's like, let your apology be as loud as your criticism. <laughs> I'm sorry, Trey Young. He's a killer. I was so He's wrong. You are about that. He's badass. Yeah. He is a badass. I didn't expect, Ju- and I'm exaggerating here, I didn't expect him to shoot 10 for 80 yeah. going into, <laughs> sure. into, into sure. these first two games. I mean, Checks out, yeah. Uh, he's... He's not handling this playoff defense well because this is the first time that he's had to be the guy right. in the playoffs. And I think that that's an adjustment. So, I mean, if he continues to play like this way, uh, I can't see the Knicks winning. No. Yeah. You know, I think Atlanta is going to pull this out. Um, but hopefully he gets back to it because obviously, you know, I grew up uh, in New York. Uh, MSG is always a great place to see in the playoffs. Uh, so let's see. You know. um, did you ever see a playoff game in MSG? Ooh. I know it's been a while. <laughs> it's been it's so like I long. Four. I was four. I was four when they last had one. I think the last time I saw a playoff game in MSG was when I was 16. I'm 37. Uh, and is, <laughs> it, is it everything people say it is? Oh, it's magical, especially back then. You know, uh, ever since the Knicks have not been good for so long, MSG has become kind of a tourist attraction. So, mm-hmm. like, you didn't have, like, that authentic, real Knicks fan base That's there. That's such a good point, dude. Yeah. That's so, so true. like, now that – you're seeing it on TV. I think the Knicks fans are back. Uh, but during like that 20-year span, it wasn't there. Mm. And it's crazy. Like I want to stop short of the objective, sort of sanctimonious stuff. Like mm-hmm. The Knicks are important. <laughs> but MSG is incredible. Yeah. And to see it rocking again. And I don't know about you, just sort of thinking about my friends and family back home. Like NYC and lockdown for a year. Coming out to the Knicks in the playoffs, it was this real sort of like, man, we're coming out the other side of this tunnel moment. Nature is healing. I just love seeing it. That's how I feel about the bar here. And it's funny because Eric has the great line about how the Nets do culture better than any other 
team and Portland's close to that. Like they get their city and they get it now. The Nets don't have the footprint. So like it's that the roots don't go deep enough for it that really yeah. to grab quite the hold. But I do think from a marketing standpoint and just a branding standpoint, like they they're very good at taking Brooklyn culture and being like, this is who we are and wrapping themselves in it. And it's cool. I think th- our our aim, our core aim at dnbr is that we're trying yes. to bottle up whatever denver culture is and create and cultivate whatever denver culture can and should be through our sports teams and that's why the bar so cool is like you have a real diversity of people that show here including age the craziest thing to me is the age like us getting f- full generations you know like yeah. grandpas out it's of the awesome. game it's just cool like i remember when i was in ireland in dublin and i went out to a bar it was the number one takeaway i had from the bar scene there so i was like you go out here and you have a Lodo bar and it's going to be all 20 somethings or you go to Broadway and you got all 30 somethings. Like it's just different. Ver- you go mm-hmm. to the Dublin and it's just like every generation is at the bar together and it's just like the neighborhood is there. And I feel like the DNBar bar has a little bit of that. And oh, I think uh, to me, that's like what's cool about it is it's so hey, cool, man. This is we're trying to get the cross section of the full city, not just. You yeah, know, the, the regular yeah, 30 awesome, something man. sports fan. Or yeah, whatever. I haven't seen it live, but this is this is dope, guys. I, I got to come back like when it's like. You know, Come like an, an abs, abs game, game. Yeah. yeah, like when the Nuggets aren't playing and just see the vibe because this Dude. looks, this is pretty sick. Please do, man. The, the Sunday, yeah. Sunday, right? Abs are Sunday night, six o'clock. Abs I believe. are Sunday. Yeah. Yes, game one, I think for them. Yeah, because they swept, right? And yeah. they don't know who they put tonight. Is the yeah, it'll be game one. what is it? Wild versus who tonight? It'll be either Minnesota, Vegas, or the Vegas Golden Knights. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I'm with Alex, by the way. It's Julius Randle to me, and it's like one thing to miss the shots, but there have been possessions where I'm watching it. I'm like. He doesn't even know what he wants to do right now. Yeah. And he just sort of looks for someone else. Mm. It's been both for me. Like, I wasn't a believer in either Julius Randle or Trey Young in the playoffs, to be quite honest, <laughs> man. Alex is going to kill me after this show. Trey? <laughs> Dude, honestly, like, I was really worried about his defense. I was really worried about just, like, if he's not hitting threes, can he get other guys involved? Can he lead a really good playoff offense? And he has. So yeah. I'm, I've been a little surprised by both. The ball's on him, man. Like, he just – he really does want the smoke. Incredible. Like, there's some players – Jamal Murray's this way. Like, Jamal Murray is trying to elevate the stress that is on the Nuggets. Like, even right now not playing. But when he's on the court, down 10, and he is talking trash. Right, like, right. he's like – it really is Jordan-esque where he's like, I'm not feeling it enough. I need to feel it even more. So I'm going to, like, poke the bear because I need that extra hit. And I think Trey Young is 100% cut from that clock. Was it just me or – did y'all feel like Jamal took a little while to get going because there was no fans in the crowd mm. in, in the beginning of the season? Like, and then he kind of just was like, all right, I'm going to have to tune this out and like create my own motivation a little bit. Yeah. What like, a take. I always wonder yeah, that. I, I, like, I, I'm, not say, I'm not speaking for him, but like, he's just the guy that when the lights are bright, he just takes it to another level. And I think he loves you know, shutting up opposing fans and mm-hmm. making them kind of eat their words. So, and you saw it, I think, especially when the fans were starting to get back, he was having such a great run before uh, yeah. his, his, his knee injury. His season kind of um, ascended as more and more fans mm-hmm. got let into buildings. Well, and what was his 50 piece to Cleveland, right? And there were fans there and he was like jawing yeah. at fans. Yeah, yeah, like, exactly. This is what I mean. Yeah. I almost think it's a good Murray, theory. I almost good think theory. Murray wants the other fans he, in the arena more than the whole thing. <laughs> that, that picture that it, I... I think iconic picture already of Trey Young standing in the corner at MSG, and there's yeah, it's yeah. like every New Yorker, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like every type of New Yorker is in and, the picture. And Trey's got this this glowing smile on his yeah. face, like this is what I dreamt of. Yeah. And it, I look at that picture and I go, that could just be Jamal. It could be the same picture. Oh, yeah, and you yeah. stick Jamal there, like mm-hmm. he wants that. He yeah. wants that. Is Trey this year, this generation's Reggie? Man, he's got it. Or, I mean, he's, there's more to go there, but I mean, he's poking the bear at Matt at MSG. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, like, <laughs> if it goes to seven and every like Trey Young performance is like that, then might be. I, I like the Hawks in that series. I, I liked it coming into it. I thought I was surprised at how many people were picking the Knicks in this one because I'm like, the Knicks already are playing playoff basketball. They just did it all season long. Hawks have Bogdanovich. They're just on fire. I love. I love that team. I'm. That's a great series. It's a f- it's one of my favorite series going right now. Easily, yeah. there's yeah. some actually there actually is some pretty good series. Most yeah. out west. That's the only one I think out east that I think is is that all that intriguing. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. All the west series right now are like in doubt still. So yeah, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Uh, and that even it kind of set the tone in the playing. Like the yeah. east playing was like <laughs> so true, man. And then and then you had the west playing, and like every game was like oh, you know, like, every single one, <laughs> all, all of it. even the Spurs Memphis yeah. game was like weirdly competitive. Yeah, yeah. I so, love that game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, are you more surprised by the Bucks looking this good or the Heat looking this bad? 
And you can even r- whittle down mm. the heat maybe a little bit to Jimmy Butler looking this bad. Dude, he oh, looks yeah. terrible. Uh, I would say the Heat definitely. I I think the Bucks they've had a, a few playoff disappointments in the past. Uh, I think they were coming into the series fired up, but like Miami went to the final. <laughs> like like how are they playing like this right now? I I I'm confused. I think some of it is some of the injury issues that they had during the regular season that are kind of carrying their way into the playoffs, but not to get blown out every single game like this. This is crazy. Yeah, probably the Heat, but the Bucks just might be really good. Like maybe yeah. the Bucks are just really good, man. And Giannis is the same guy he's always been. Chris Middleton, my guy, is just like awesome. <laughs> Tearing it up. And Drew you have the Holiday. weirdest guys, man. He does. <laughs> <laughs> weirdest. Joe Harris, Joe, yeah. Chris Middleton. Yeah. Love Joe Harris too, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Joe Harris loves yeah, going just, on. Over just here. think about if you're Milwaukee and you replace Eric Bledsoe with Drew Holiday. I'm that, telling you, that is an incredible upgrade. By the way, isn't Drew Holiday? Is he not just the the richest man's Eric Bledsoe? Like, no, who, who, no, who, no, 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 no. Because Eric Bledsoe's not this guy. But this is what people talk themselves into when they've signed Eric Bledsoe. Yeah, and he's not, and he never is. Drew Holiday, however, that dude in abundance. Eric Bledsoe, lot, one in a long line of guys that got the LeBron James bump. The oh, LeBron man. James agency bump <laughs> and everything else. In my opinion, because he had like a couple good years, but I always thought like he he was a, a in my opinion a flawed style player. And this is this is why to me it is clearly like the Buc- I'm not surprised by either of these things, but mostly I'm just so impressed with the Bucks because this is what happens. We whittle everything down from the ten thousand foot view to the easiest narrative. And what went wrong with the Bucks over the last two years? Giannis can't get it done in the playoffs. And that's part of it. Like, there are some limitations to him. But that was not the whole story. And it's so clear that now you move out Bledsoe, who nobody really talked about. Bledsoe, not, with a, Holiday. Uh, not a fuck hole guy. No, not, not a fuck hole guy. Whatever the opposite is. The you blood know what? hole. The thing is, is, I think he plays hard. I think he's about it. I just, his style of play to me is, like, not suited for spat, that team or really any team in this day and era. But, um, but Drew, <laughs> I'm like, get him out of the league. You're trying to write him out of the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> and he's still a serviceable point guard. Yeah, he on. might be like a back like he might be a backup point guard is what I'm saying. Like he might be more of a DJ Augustine, bring him in and see if he can get buckets against the second unit. I don't think he's a starting point guard. Maybe that's a hot Not on a good team. Not, Not on a, a good yeah. team. But but you have Drew Holiday who's just like again overlooked a everything lot, you right? want in a guy. But he plays so hard defensively, he's smart and offensively he's a little shaky, but he does have some some utility. And it's like, yeah, that was the problem with the Bucks. I number know. one, like the Giannis stuff was on there because superstars do have to be able to like a- address their flaws and weaknesses or whatever, and he can get rattled at the foul line. We've seen it already. But you give him the right pieces, and they win. And I, the reason I set this up is you could see a Jokic narrative will form if the Nuggets, even this year, like nobody's counting on them to lose. But if they do not make it to the finals, people are going to be like, yeah, with Jokic, this or that. And it's like, guys, man, there's other aspects of a team that – we can't whittle it down to the simplest little digestible bit. Yeah. I, I don't think that this year, especially with all the injuries, if, if they had a full squad, I, I would agree with you. But, like, this year you, you literally have, what, like three starters out? You know, you have, um, you know, a, a, a backcourt that was literally thrown together in the past two months. You can't really expect. If they would have lost to Portland, do you think people would have said that? I do. And maybe they still will. I'm, I put that in the past tense. I probably I th- shouldn't have. I'm, I'm with Alex. I think I think most people would have would have been okay with it, and then you would have gotten the people that were that would chime in with, like you said, the easy narrative. The MVP well, this can't what, get his team exactly, out of the first round because Nick Wright pre made this point the other right. day on Bomani's podcast, where he's like, "Is anybody going to be surprised if they lose to Portland?" Like, and it's like, well, maybe you should. Shouldn't necessarily be, but mm-hmm. again, it's the narrative that's easiest to whittle down. I so. don't think that that's fair. One, I mean, Jokic has been phenomenal in every playoff appearance yeah. he's been in. Uh, so they've gone out of the first round every time he's played in the playoffs. Uh, you know, injuries happen. It's a reality. The, the, the fact is, is a lot of people actually pick Portland to win the series. So I think if right. if Denver somehow, if Denver pulls it out and they seem like they, they have a really good shot to do so, uh, that's a further... Um, point to his legacy. Absolutely. Yeah. I will just say I expected Jokic to win this series, and I still do. And that's, I don't think the slander wouldn't have, would have necessarily been deserved if it came his way, if they do lose. But for everything we just said, I do think Jokic is that good. I do think he's an MVP, and I do think an MVP is capable of carrying a team past round one, even with injuries. 
They always say like the old adage is, is the best player usually wins the series, and and Jokic is the best player. Yeah, by far. That three <laughs> point, those three pointers last night were so. They just kept coming too. Like, yeah. just hitting them. I, I don't know back if you guys. Breakers. ESPN stats and info tweeted this out. Uh, Jokic is the first player since Michael Jordan in 1992 to go this. to go 30 plus at least 50 percent from the field plus at least in three the first three games of a series. Wow, that's that's all scoring. Yeah, don't double Jokic. Let's make him beat you, Michael Jordan. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's just gonna turn into Michael. Jordan. This is a stat. I think it had three caveats, and sometimes those can be a little tricky. But at the same time, we are talking about volume scoring, which is a thing. Just nobody. I wonder if the the if people will start to look at Jokic as a scorer. You the guy I mean? has like, made the most baskets in the league this year. <laughs> well, he's he's, played num- the most games, he's yeah, number right. one in made baskets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's averaging 36 in 34 minutes per game. I know. But this is this. what I'm yeah. saying. Is like, I'm not saying myself. Like I consider him an everything. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, I consider sure. him. No, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. But I'm saying people look at him and they're like, his passing is great and right. he can versatile do this stuff. It's like, you know what he also can do is give you 35 points per game in a playoff series, which is like a short list of even your best scorers that right. you could say can give you 35 a game in a playoff yeah. series. But this is what we talked about last night. No matter what the defense throws at him, he's got a counter. And it's not just he's, like, going to counter it and be okay playing that way. He's going to counter it and be absolutely at an MVP level playing that way. He's going to score at an MVP level if you play him one-on-one. He's going to pass, like, the best passer in the league if you double-team him. So so just anything. He, He is officially unstoppable. Your best bet, your best bet is getting him more upset with the referees than the other team. Yeah, that's so true. Let's take our final break. On the other side, I want to talk a little bit more about some of the Western Conference series we we haven't really di- di- dove into, and also pregame preview game four, which is mere hours away. But first, mere take hours. us away, Harrison. Yeah, it's playoff time at DraftKings, guys. Bigger stakes, bigger promotions. DraftKings Sportsbook is putting you courtside with the chance to turn five dollars into two hundred dollars. That's 40 to 1 odds on any basketball game. All you have to do is pick any team that's still in the hunt for the uh, Larry O'Brien. And if that team wins, you will receive $200 in free credits. Yeah, that's great. That's right. Super easy. Uh, pick any team that's still in contention. Bet $5. If that team wins, you cash 200 bucks in free credits. Get on this offer, guys, if you haven't downloaded DraftKings Sportsbook. Great time to sign up. Tons of promos going on along with this one. Uh, so make sure to download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code DNVR when you sign up to turn $5 into $200 in free site credit. Bet on the basketball team of your choice to win their next game. If you do, you can claim $200 in free credit. That's promo code DNVR for a limited time at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older, Colorado only. New customers only. Wager paid out in site credits. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-47. Zero zero. Um, also, get in on this deal from Hassle Cattle Company. Uh, you guys should probably get in on Eric's order. I think that's uh, if we miss out on this one, we'll get another one in yeah. three days. In, in ne- next week, yeah. The, that guy ordered. I can't believe he eats this much meat because he orders every it's week. Just literally on an thirty all pounds of meat diet. every week. <laughs> the math is off. Bro. The math is off. See, I don't understand it. There's yeah. meat in a storage <laughs> fridge somewhere. <laughs> uh, but at a Hassle Cattle Company. They've got an awesome deal going on for DNV or listeners. Buy three, get one free on their flank steaks. They're only $9.99, so really affordable. Super tasty. Kaylee, you want to buy some beef with me, bro? Uh, yeah. Well, let's steak. put together an order right here. Let's put together one. <laughs> I can go for some steak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Denver steaks are my favorite. The Denver steaks are phenomenal also. They got all the different types of meat phrasing that that you guys could want uh buy three get one free on their flank steaks with the code dnvr flank at checkout use that at hasslecattlecompany.com again the code dnvr flank at checkout to buy or buy three get one free on those flank steaks you can also use the code dnvr10 to get 10 percent off your entire order and finally finally saving the best for last right down the street from the dnvr bar illegal pete's so happy to have these guys on board um they got a bunch of locations across denver uh don't go to those other burrito places go to illegal pete's because they're denver and we're denver Uh, so hit them up they're located off broadway they got a location on 16th street mall 16th and blake they've also got a spot right next to the dnvr bar on colfax just a couple blocks away tons of great deals as well uh, they got happy hour at all locations from 3 to 6 p.m. every day. $1 off drafts, $1 off house and coin style margs. 
$20 party marks, $1 off large chips and queso. Uh, so hit them up. Great spots to go. Maybe you're coming to the game Saturday. Maybe you're coming to the Avs game Sunday at the DNVR bar. Um, stop in there before, after. Take advantage of those great happy hour deals. Perfect. Final segment here on DNVR Nuggets podcast. Don't forget, tune in tomorrow. We got the pregame show. I love the pregame show. Next season, I don't think we have time this year. Next season, we'll probably turn those into a side podcast so yeah. people can listen the to people that. People want it. People do want it, but it just we got to like streamline how that's going to happen. Um, so, But let's move into some of these other series. Suns-Lakers is interesting to me. I'm bummed about Chris Paul, but I, I'm curious to see if Phoenix can keep themselves in it by pushing this to game four for two reasons <laughs> one if they get or if they can get this 2-2 in game four anything can happen down the stretch like i know everybody's counting phoenix out but you get it to 2-2 reset the series maybe chris paul starts feeling better your guys get more confident i don't know but two even if you can't the nuggets and lakers do if the nuggets advance would play the lakers and i would really love for them to not get a week off <laughs> before that happens um do you have any yeah. what, what are your thoughts on watching that series yeah so phoenix was my other upset pick i actually thought with chris paul being healthy obviously right that they would have had a good shot to to beat the lakers they would have uh, um but now with things one. being kind of shifted around that's gonna be interesting but yeah uh to to your point uh the less rest for the lakers the better so hopefully we see a series still and you know, Devin Booker, th this is his opportunity to take another step forward, and let's see if he can. Mm. Don't you feel like like no. game two not having Chris Paul the way it went was kind of like the missed opportunity? It's, yeah. It's yeah. probably too early. And they got, like, campaign played great. So, like, yeah. the replacement player was good, but at the same time, like, I'd still rather have Chris Paul than a good campaign game. Yeah. Uh, I'm with you guys. I hope it goes seven or six just so they have to expend a lot of energy, but I want the Lakers. In you the want the round. Lakers. Yeah, I want the Lakers in the second round. Wow. I want the that. Lakers in the second round. All right. That's the pragmatic <laughs> guy over yeah. there. Yeah. He's Look, I mean, why not Why not test yourself against the best? And yeah, this yeah. year with these injuries, with this team as currently constructed, why not try to take on the best, man? I also kind Denver's of, got nothing to lose this year. I agree with Wyndon. I, I also think that uh, the Lakers are starting to look like you'd rather play them sooner. Sooner rather than later. Well, they don't look like a well-oiled machine right now, and I feel like they can get there by the end of the run. Yeah, they're they're definitely playing them their way in, kind of like yeah. they're they're still figuring out some stuff with all the missing personnel that they that they've had. But yeah, I mean, if if the if the Nuggets can somehow get past the Lakers, just imagine what the rest of the playoffs looks like. Yeah, imagine the vibes. The vibes. <laughs> imagine oh my the God, vibes. The vibes would be incredible. We got folks pointing out how bold Wind has been since he got engaged. Oh, <laughs> congratulations, by the He's way. A new man. It's so Thank true. You. Really yeah. bold. No. Do you feel the change in yourself? No, but apparently there's <laughs> been a change, so uh, let's keep it going. Let's look ahead now, guys, to game four tomorrow. Um, do you think that there is an advantage for one team or the other that – it is so quick, such a quick turnaround. Honestly, I'm going to go with the Nuggets. I, I, I think that they have no pressure, and they usually perform better when they're when they have nothing to, to worry about. So, like for me, they're they're going to play as hard as they always have. That's the one thing that, again, with the chemistry and the culture that this team has, they're going to put it all out there. Where as the Blazers, they have everything. If they don't win this game, the series is over for them. So, like uh, that could work negatively against them, and, and it'll be interesting to see how it plays out tomorrow. Yeah, the Blazers are playing for everything tomorrow. Terry Stotts, Terry Stotts is coaching for his job. Like Damian Lillard and C.J. McCollum are playing to play together next season. Like if the Blazers lose to this Nuggets team, that that team is getting blown up. I'm pretty confident in that. So they got a lot of pressure on them. I'm sure we're gonna see some adjustments that we didn't think we'd see from them at the beginning of this series. Do you think so? I want to hold on to that thought. You think I so? I, I do. I think they got to try something else. Um, like, I think the Nuggets played Enos Cantor out of the series last game. I don't think we see him again. I, I think the Blazers, like, might go with that super small ball look on their bench unit. Denver's got to be prepared for that, man. Right. Mm -hmm. you, you can totally just to see me, that that's coming. like, come on, is that really going to work? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, what do you think? Like, if they put Rondé Hollis Jefferson out there instead of Cantor, and they're like, you know what, we're going to go three minutes – Four minutes, whatever it is, with him on Jokic. Well, I know Rondé very well from my time at the oh, Nets. Yeah. Uh, Rondé is a hard worker. He's he's a he's a, a guy who gives his all, but that's too tall of a task for him. It's a yeah. weight. <laughs> you have like eighty pounds. It's like you're wanting Rondé Hollis. Yeah, this is not to a be, knockout. Yeah. You're Jay, wanting him to like, be Draymond Green. Like, yeah, yeah at that like, point. 
Uh, on a benefit, he's an underrated playmaker, but yeah, it's just too much. And that's the idea, I think, behind it is they're yeah. like, we're not stopping him anyway, even with Nurk. So can we just continue scoring so that maybe we lose those minutes by four? Yeah. But then Nurk comes in as a sledgehammer against the bench. I don't know. Yeah, and, and maybe it works out that way against the bench, what I'm about to say, but like going small, it feels like the one thing that worked well for them was rebounding last yeah. night. And you yeah. go small, you take some well, of that look away. But that was rebounding with Nurkic against the against bench. Against the bench, you're right. So, yeah, so I get that. Um, I think Portland has a lot of pressure. I think Denver's going to play loose. I think Denver's going to have fun. Mm. And they also just saw what I hope, I think, will be the nadir for Porter in this series. And... I don't know if we're going to see a 30-point game, but do we see a much better game than that? Uh, I feel confident at some point it happens. I do. A Porter quarter in game four, or just a Porter game, but a Porter quarter in particular that puts it away, like that sets the table stage so well for Jokic to close this out in game five. Mm -hmm. Like Jokic, I think, can. It's weird to say because nothing is single-handedly, but I do think that Jokic can have a game where he gets Denver over the top when other guys aren't quite there. He probably has one of those. Now, is that game four? Maybe. Maybe it's not. I, he probably is not going to give that bullet, you know, aim for that in this next game. But if you can get one with another Austin Rivers type game, you know, somebody like that does that or Michael Porter steps up. And it's, I think, especially important if it's Michael Porter, because if Michael Porter does it like Austin Rivers, they're not going to adjust their game plan to say we have to shut down Austin Rivers. Right. If Porter gets going and Denver finds a way like Portland does get compromised and boom, once they're already so compromised, you compromise them one more way and it's like. I'm Tidal glad, wave. I'm glad you yeah. brought that up because I wanted to ask. They did sell out on Jokic in that fourth quarter. First time we've really seen it to that extent in this series. Now, Jokic made them pay twice to Austin Rivers, who yeah. they left open. Mm -hmm. Do they go to that? Do they start doubling it? He is averaging 36 I points so. in 34 minutes a game. I think they're going to start doubling him more and more. They have that to. makes Jokic even more dangerous. Yeah, Because I, if he gets other guys involved and he starts doing double-digit assists, like... Look, statistically, that's held up across an entire season. I, generally, I agree with you. But in a playoff series, with these injuries, with the other guys on the floor, like I just think you look at this and you go, we cannot let Jokic beat us like this. We have to make Facundo Campazzo or Aaron Gordon beat yeah. us. I think it's what they're Here's what do. I think how I would look at it. Jokic has scored 34 points, 38 points, 36 points. There's no variance in those numbers. I mean, barely a two-point variance, right, off of 36. If you look at it the other way, the aggregate might be higher for Denver. But that includes that some nights you get 5 of 10 from Austin Rivers and some nights you get 3 of 10, and that averages out to 4 of 10. But the 3 of 10 nights you win, you see what I'm saying? Whereas yeah. Jokic consistently can beat you the same way if you guard him this way. Whereas Denver, over 10 games, probably will beat you more often if you double him. But you just, now you're at the point where you got to hope that guys right. are cold enough. Mm -hmm. Dude. It's a no-brainer. I'm making Aaron Gordon shoot the basketball. Like yeah. Enough of this. Jokic is killing you. Yeah. I'll be yeah. curious to see, man. I, if they do go small, I suspect that's what they'll do. And, and maybe it's more picking your moments. We're going to guard Jokic straight up when Nurkic is on the court, but he's going to be on the court against him less. And when he's not on the court, we're going to double, hoping that it's the staggered minutes that really kills you. I kind of see a big game from Paul if they go small. Chris Paul. Or, um, <laughs> Good guess. Paul Good guess, Adam. You know? Um, I, I think Paul that George. he... Paul George. <laughs> Paul McCartney. Paul, Paul Reed, Reed, my guy. <laughs> Are we talking about G League giving me P. Paul Reed? P. Paul. Right Paul. No, I just think that Paul's experience will play well into, into game four, so... Yeah, Let, I agree. Yeah. If they go small, yeah, I would look for Millsap to try to eat. Try to eat. Yeah. No. Any other th thoughts for this one? Like, I think if you could write the story, game four would be the Porter game. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing, too, one more. I think Denver successfully, they started with Faku. Eventually, they switched to Rivers. It was only Shaq for five minutes. It was only AG on Dame for, like, two or three possessions that I can remember off the top of my head in the second half. So I think they successfully held on to that card. I think they're still feeling like we stick to the plan, and if Dame has 40 at half, Right. We have two or three options, yeah. break in case of emergency. You got to wonder if a little regression is coming from Denver from three. Oh, I mean. So they shot 30% in game one, 46 or 47 in game two. They were above 50% last night. So you wonder if that slips down towards, you know, around 40 again. Yeah. But I think if Nuggets shoot over 40% from three, especially in a game where Portland might double yoke more, mm. Denver's going to win that game. Yeah. Man, they get this one, man. I'm going to be feeling good. Feeling good. I'm already, already feeling, feeling good. good but yeah. I'll be feeling really good if yeah. they get this one. 
Alex, it's been fun having you in the lounge, man. Thanks for having me, everyone. This was awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah, Dude, we got, we'll get you back in here on an app. See, we'll, when it's bumping. It does suck because <laughs> I want to get all the Nuggets guys so in bad. here for the Nuggets game, and it's like never going to happen. <laughs> right, <laughs> like, right. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. kind of a bit of a bummer, but you know what? Abs are fun, too. Uh, and we'll get you in for an Abs game, and, and we'll go crazy. Nice, nice. Looking forward to it. Uh, everybody else, hit that like button. You saw on my Twitter, I tweeted out his handle. Give him a follow. Read his stuff up on Nuggets.com. And we'll be back again tomorrow, guys. You want to be here at the DNVR bar. The game's at 1, right? Don't miss this. Two. Two? Two. So Two. But, but get here before 1. Man. If you're planning on coming. Honestly, like, here's the thing. It's fun. Like, there's the weird energy where people show up and there's no tables. And people are like, Am I, should I leave or whatever? It's like, guys, trust me. It's going to get Stay. packed. Stay. Like, Stay. Ask if there's two. If somebody sitting out of two chairs open, like, somebody is going. It's like a full train. Somebody is going to take the seat. So you might as well take me the first one to take the yeah. extra seat. You know, like, that was get one of the coolest the parts of last night. There's. We have like big tables at the bar, and it's like two or three different groups of people yeah. all sitting at the same table, getting to know each other, yeah. becoming friends, Come like, make some friends. Yeah, man. And I'm telling out, you, dude. is this always the like middle school cafeteria moment where everyone's like, "Well, well am I supposed to sit here or whatever?" And it's yeah. like, "Hey, mm -hmm. get here." Just be like, "Hey, I'm pulling up a chair." Here and we had hundreds of people. I mean, I don't know, a hundred people just standing for four hours last night. So and if honestly, you want to do that too, I'm up here. I have this. I have this chair. I could sit. No, I'm standing I too because I like. Yeah. But I'm standing because I'm like the energy. You're just so nervous. Yeah, you're you, trying to, like, you want to be standing. You want to be standing. Yeah. <laughs> Did you want to be in the balcony or the pit for a concert? Yeah, I want to yeah, be in exactly, the pit. Bro. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, we will hope to see everybody out tomorrow as uh, they close out their their two games in Portland. Hopefully with the win. Hit the like button. We'll see you tomorrow.